So there are a few reasons why I'm making this video. I had a really bad mental breakdown. Kind of worse than my breakup when I the one I had after my breakup and that's saying a lot because it was really bad. So, um, number one, a few things. I want to talk about a few things. I have been receiving DMs and a few I have received a few mails as well. And there's one thing that I noticed and it's coming a lot more now and it starts with something like I totally get you quote unquote I also hate my father and I mean that's it that that's not the message that I'm trying to put out there I don't hate my father my father is an amazing human being there's no justifying he's not a very good father that's for sure but that doesn't make him a bad person and that doesn't mean I hate him. I totally understand where you're coming from. I do. It's you, I have a very difficult relationship with him, but it doesn't mean that I hate him. Everything that I have done so far, the communication that I want people to understand is that you have to be there for your loved ones. So my father is not, an emotional person he's a very logical person the only thing I've ever lacked from him is the emotional support when I needed him the most he just wasn't there for me emotionally but my father loves me and he has always supported me in every other way I mean I, I couldn't have come this far without his support I mean look at me he has never said no to me for for anything in life he has given me all sorts of freedom all all of it like there are there are times i have realized that i have had more freedom than some of the men that i know in my life which is huge because i come from a brown family and that's that's a big thing he's a very he's a very different man and i really admire him as a person as a human being i he's very kind he is sweet he's generous he's hard working he is He's brilliant, but it's just that when you decide to, when you have to be there for your loved ones, it's just kind of letting them know it's okay to make mistakes and you learn from them and you move on. That's just the only thing, the affection, that, that love, that okay, you know what, it's okay that you made a mistake, I'm, I'm here for you, talk to me. So I've never really talked to him about anything, I've never really opened up to him about anything and that's the only problem other than that I absolutely I think he's he's an amazing man he's just not a very good father but um, I don't hate him that's not the message that I'm trying to put out there the only message I'm trying to put out there is if you have a difficult relationship it's probably the you think this hatred this this whole thing it's coming from hurt you think that you hate this person you think that you're angry the truth is it's just it's just hurt and you need to forgive yourself this person and you are you can't really accomplish anything with with hatred hatred will never win and that's just that's just that's just hurt speaking nothing else so that's one thing and another thing that's happening a lot is that my ex is also a monster I also I hate him so much and he did this he did that and I get it I totally get it my my last relationship 2019 relationship it was a terrible relationship I completely understand where you're coming from but at the end of the day to be very honest I have forgiven him I don't hate him I was you uh, there was a time I was very angry, I was mad, I was just furious, but it was just hurt. So the moment I decided to forgive him and myself as well, things were better. And again, he might be a really bad boyfriend, he might be a really good, he is a very bad boyfriend, that I know for sure. At least he was to me. But perhaps he's a really good um, uncle or son or I, I, 
I don't know, a teacher or whatever he does in life, um, it's, it's not just, the truth is I was with this man for more than 15 months and honestly, I really don't know him as a person enough to tell you if he's a good person or a bad person. The only thing that I know that he was not good for me, he was not good to me um, at times, but I do not hate him. I really don't have anything against him in my heart. So if I ever notice that, that you're, whatever you're writing to me, it's coming from hatred and anger, the only thing that I'm gonna say is you need to go seek help because it's it's okay we all need to it's a, it's a big thing and I understand that's what I did I, I I wanted some help I went and got help because I needed it and you need to just kind of analyze and understand your emotions so that you don't feel this way and this is this is not a really Good feeling it's not productive it's not nice for you to feel this way about someone anyway you, you're just gonna you're just punishing yourself and it's, it's not your fault it's not you and yeah you'll be okay you just need a little, little help that's all um, so these things I was just kind of overthinking I was like okay maybe what I'm doing is not right if this is a message that's going out there that's not what I want I don't want to spread hatred or negativity or anything of that sort. My only thing, the only thing that I want is to just help people communicate better with each other because I do believe communication is the key and you just need to learn from each other and be better and be a better version of ourselves, right? That's all you're trying to accomplish here. And um, so here's the big thing that happened. I met someone really wonderful in 2020 and well, he was here for a couple of months and then the whole pandemic happened and we tried our best to kind of stay in touch. I mean, he was here back and forth 2020 and 2021, first few months. But the truth is he actually hated the city. He didn't want to move here. And the only logical <laughs> solution to that was um, me moving countries. And I mean, I wanted to do it. I was ready to do it. There was a time I thought I was gonna do it it was almost kind of done but there are a lot here at the moment for me at stake I am just so tied up at the moment and that would have been a huge change I mean it's always a huge change it's moving countries right it's a big thing but um, for me there are a lot lot of there are a lot of things that I kind of need to be here for and that would have been mentally challenging for me to just like kind of shift my whole life so I was not quite ready for it um, so we kind of and but but it was it was so beautiful it was so wholesome it was so nice but uh, we had to say goodbye to each other and that happened in 2021 and I thought it's okay it's just life and I decided to kind of um, say goodbye and we parted our ways and I was extremely sad at that time. And I was going through a really rough time and I didn't want anyone to know. Um, I was very, very sad. But at that time, I was really not looking into someone as a very serious anything, but I met someone really wonderful. And I, again, <laughs> I was just a little too cold to him because I was going through so much and I think I didn't let him, I wasn't very open to him as much as he was to me. So um, I didn't let him in, but he was, I, I mean, I thought he was, he was very sweet. He was so kind and such a sweet man. But I mean, is, is, this is the guy who ghosted me by the way. <laughs> guys have seen the reels and all the fun stuff but I do I mean I'm never not justifying ghosting that's not justified but I think I do kind of owe him an apology as well so he was he was um he was very sweet to me very very sweet to me I was just at that time I was going through so much that I didn't really let him in 
So he had to go back because he had some personal emergency, and to so he went back to his country for about two months, and I was here all alone. And I was like, okay, that's okay, it's fine, I can do this. But the thing is, he just didn't stay. We just didn't stay in touch. I mean, he didn't text me. I didn't text him back. So, so we just stopped talking. And um, I was like, okay, if you're not gonna text me, I'm not gonna talk to you. And don't, don't. I don't want to. I mean, everything is content for me, and everything is funny for me. And so, don't hate on him, please. I don't want anybody to hate on him. He's a nice guy. Uh, I mean, <laughs> not justifying ghosting, by the way not that but um so I didn't text him but there was this time I went out with someone and the whole time I was with this person I was just thinking about him in the back of my head and I was like oh my god I have definitely fallen for him but I still didn't text him so I waited for almost two months to text him but there was this one night I was like okay you know what this is it I have to because I missed him so bad so I texted him hey um how are you I miss you but also at that time I I've been really busy with some new responsibilities that I've taken up and it's too much on my plate and I barely have time for myself that's also one of the reasons why I had this big mental breakdown was just in my professional environment I had huge arguments and fights and everything just boring stuff that I I was going through a lot so I texted him and it was I felt like it was such a divine connection because he was like you know what I'm coming back um, to Mumbai and that was the same night he was coming back to Mumbai I was like oh my god we're, he's my soulmate we're meant for each other so we texted back and forth a little bit and um, I, I told him hey you know what I've taken up some responsibilities and I've been really busy I know you're very busy because he is in a position where he's busy all the time and he has a lot of responsibilities so I was like you know what but let me know what works for you we should definitely um, he was like we should catch up I was like yeah definitely let me know what works for you and he just never texted back and I was like, okay, maybe he's jet lagged, give him some time. But then almost a week passed and I, I kept seeing his stories and he was spending time with his friends and other people and I felt it was just hurt. And I was so hurt so I had to just kind of like, you know what, back off and I kind of removed him from my circle. And I was like, you know, it's fine. Um, <laughs> it's okay, live your life, I get it. The message is clear. <laughs> to me so I, I, I just kind of didn't process that feeling whatsoever and it was just hurt and I was I just got busy with everything and um, that happened and one of the biggest things and or challenges we can I think just acceptance that I, I had to accept this this year um, is that my friends are not coming back and I can't really explain my friendship with these people I they are my people so I have had a very troubled lonely childhood it's just a lot and there's a book about it when it comes out you'll know it's very complicated um, I just needed someone to accept me the way I am and when you meet these people you know that they're your people for the rest of your life and they're gonna be your people for the rest of your life so these people that I met in this city and um, they're not some of them are from um, this country and some of them are not um, and they were here for work or something they accepted me just the way I am like no questions asked like why are you like this why are you like that why are you not like the other people why are you not like this or that or that? anything whatever they just accepted me like hey Anamika you're like this and that's okay with us we accept you just the way you are. No questions asked. And that's a beautiful thing. So I had a bond with them, it, it, huge, huge. This is like a connection and they were like my family, the family that I chose for myself. And now that they're not here and I spend the whole pandemic by myself, like the whole 2020, we're still in the, in the pandemic. <laughs> And I've been extremely lonely, that's one thing. So uh, not having them around has been the biggest challenge for me and I had to accept that they're not coming back. I mean, they're gonna come to visit me maybe from time to time, but that, that home that I had in them, 
I swear to God, I have my apartment, but I barely ever spend time <laughs> there in 2018, 2019, 2020, beginning of it, like all three years, I barely spent any time um, at my own apartment. I was always with them, always hanging out with them. I was just, they were just such a big part of my life, like my family, they just like my second family to be very honest I'm, I live away from my family I live alone but they became my home you know so not having them and realizing that they're not coming back because it's not going to be the same because of the pandemic that just caused me to just the, this, this spiral happened and I just lost my whole um, calm, my calm and my you know self a little bit and I had this big mental breakdown where I just I really didn't have the strength to even get up from my bed and do anything. So when that happened, you know, whenever that happens, my therapist says, just go someplace. This is why I do so many staycations. Like people think, oh, it's so fun. You just live in hotels and you just live this life. And I'm like, mm, if you knew about my mental health, <laughs> you'd say different things. The reason why I check into a hotel and I stay for a week or whatever it's because when I go through very difficult times I don't I'm it's advice that I don't live alone because I live alone and I don't have my friends here that's why there are so many staycations because it just at least I have people here people to talk to or at least just not feel so lonely even though I'm like give me the quietest room that you have um, but still I mean I see people <laughs> so it's not just me and I'm not just dealing with myself because that's not so um, a few takeaways from this video, it's a long video, I'm so sorry. Number one being some things that we really need to accept and it's painful and very hard. <laughs> it's like, for me, the hardest pill to swallow was not having my friends and I know I'm never gonna have them like the way I had them and that's really sad. Um, so sometimes you just have to accept and, and move on. Um, you uh, meeting the right person at the wrong time is a real thing but don't hold that um, for anyone I've, re I've learned that you can really ruin your present because of your past I had someone wonderful I'm not maybe maybe this person who ghosted me is a bad person maybe he does this to every woman I don't know maybe I'm not the reason at all maybe he's just like this um, but that still I will still um, admit um, that I was I was not nice <laughs> I mean I was nice I was nice but I was just cold and I, I wish I wasn't that cold to him and I wish I warmed up to him warmed up to him a little bit but oh maybe he's just he's just a narcissist who knows he just love bombed me and ghosted me and we don't know how this person is okay so <laughs> not justifying his behavior it's, it's never okay to ghost and that's one thing even if you don't like someone anymore or you're not interested, there's always a nice way of letting people know. You know, just like, hey, their name, I had a really good time with you, but I'm just not in the same mindset now. And I don't think um, it's wise for us to see each other again, but I wish you the best, bye. Or something like, hey, their name, I had a great time with you, it was lovely. But I think that um, we're just not, we just, I just don't feel the connection anymore I don't think we should see each other again something like that and just end it it's it's nice just but let them know if it's a no let them know okay ghosting is never okay um so I don't know if it was me or this person is just like this um but I still owe him an apology um for being cold to him that I don't want to take that away and now I'm <laughs> you know the fun thing that happened <laughs> why I started this happened months ago by the way it's not now uh, I told my editor that I wanted to write about him and my editor's like no you can't you can't write about him he's not important enough and he's just write a poem about him and forget about him and I was like mm, come on and let me write and then the fun thing she said if you ever have an encounter with him then you get to write about it and I'm like it has never happened before you know what I had such a misconception about ghosting I used to think that I ghosted so many people but my biggest flex is I've never ghosted anyone so if someone bothers you a lot and you just stop replying that's not ghosting it's just like setting your boundaries like I am not interested and you're bothering me it's clear stop 
but ghosting is you just stop communicating i it happened to me first time 2021 has been remarkable and so <laughs> So it, you know, it, it was so funny because um, she said, "You have to, if you have ever if you ever if there's ever an encounter, you're gonna have to then you write." And I was like, mm, "I don't want that." And one of my acquaintances uh, has got uh, his place. It's a it's a it's the same street. So now, like thrice a week, I walk past his apartment, and I'm like, "That's rejection!" Like right at my face. Look at the man who rejected you twice. <laughs> So that's how this is all coming back and it's it's fun stuff now and, and everything is content right um, so yeah um, another takeaway from this is that people don't really owe you anything that doesn't mean you don't deserve it that doesn't mean that you're not worthy of it of course you are you deserve an explanation you deserve to know what happened but just the thing is people don't owe it to you so sometimes you just have to accept it and move on and it's I know it's hard but there is no closure sometimes. The closure is just accepting that you're not going to get an answer and move on. <laughs> that's it. Um, so, yeah, that's all. I just kind of wanted to, yeah, get these things um, off my chest. I do not hate my father. Please, I don't want to see another mail or a message saying something like that. I do not hate my ex. I do not hate anybody, to be very honest. I only have love in my heart. And... Uh, forgive yourself I think that's the beginning of a beautiful relationship with yourself that it starts with forgiveness um, it's not your fault whatever happened it's okay we all go through shit <laughs> and it's fine and that's all um, I hope you guys have a great rest of the year we still have four months left <laughs> I hope something good happens <laughs> But um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me. Bye.